you know, one of the most popular combinations at Chelsea every year is green and white. So regardless of what we do in terms of adventurous colour, green and white planting is always a relief, it's always popular, and it's wonderfully calming. Now, if I was putting a green and white combination together, whether it was for sun or shade, probably the plant that I'd reach for first would be ordinary Choisia tenata. And Choisia tenata ticks so many boxes because it grows on virtually any soil, it grows in sun, it grows in shade, and it flowers twice a year, reliably. It's also very easy to control its size and spread just with selective pruning. Usually I would do that early in the year, just cutting some of these old shoots back into the plant to, in to encourage more branching from lower down. And you should never be afraid, you know, of using basic shrubs like this because these leaves are very reflective and also that's giving you a foundation to build on. Another really good basic that I use a lot in sun or shade is, is good old Viburnum tinus. Now this one is, is quite late this season but this one is still showing a lot of quite pink flower bud but the basic effect is green and white. And again that will give you a good foil for other plants when it's actually not in flower. You'll notice here, I, I, in this particular combination, I've used a couple of larger specimens. And I think that's really important when you're putting a new piece of planting together, is to use some larger specimens and the rest of them as smaller plant material, because that gives you an instant sense of maturity. Now, assuming this was in a shady spot, I might add to it just an ordinary Fatsia japonica because this has a very large bold leaf again shiny and reflective and it gives me a very different texture and a different shade of green. If I wanted more cream in the planting I could use the variegated form and this is an underused plant in my opinion it's not quite as fast growing and vigorous as the plain green one, but it does add a lot of colour in the planting. So you've already got a green and white combination before you add anything else. Likewise, if I wanted a smaller leaf, I could choose this one. This is Pyrrhus Little Heath. And this is a pyrrhus which you would grow for its foliage rather than its flowers. It's a plant I use a lot because I love this sort of overall light silvery effect. And in winter it takes on quite a pink tinge. Now this needs acid soil but it's also extremely good for a pot in shade. So if you haven't got acid soil or you've just got a courtyard garden this would be a very good choice. You need underplanting in any scheme like this and here again I'm going to use a real basic. This is Euonymus Emerald Gaiety. Um, this makes a sprawling shrub and it would be very good for underplanting underneath your choisier here and right the way through. In, often we, we're told to plant in groups of three or five of something of this size but don't be afraid to sprinkle that through the planting. Don't plant in straight lines but that's going to give a nice bit of continuity and hold that green and white theme together. I'll tell you what, this also makes a brilliant short climber against a shady wall or a fence. And if it gets a bit of sun, in winter it will tinge pink, which is really quite attractive. And again, that would pick up if it was getting some light with the actual buds here of the viburnum. Now, we want to add a bit of seasonal interest to it and some seasonal flowers, because people always want to see flowers in planting. And here, if it was in semi-shade, um, sun, or even quite a shady spot, I'd use foxgloves. 
and I choose a white form of digitalis. This is one called Snow Thimble. And I would put about three of these through the planting and I, I would sprinkle them because that's how you see them growing naturally. You see them seeding themselves and drifting. And you know, these plants which are drifters are really useful to bring light height into the foreground. We have too much of a tendency always to pin all of the tall stuff at the back and all of the short stuff at the front. And if you get some height towards the front of your planting, that creates greater depth and much more interest through that planting picture. Remember, you know, I'm showing you this as a combination, but you've got to leave these plants room to grow and give them enough space. Another one which I will pick up on here is this, and this is Euphorbia silver swan. You know, these Euphorbia caracas varieties, people always think these are shade plants, but actually they like well-drained soil and a good sunny spot. Brilliant to add some really strong green and white into your planting picture here, if it's got enough light. If you're on heavy soil, because I know some people actually are on really quite wet clay soils which hang on to the water, tip on these, add lots of grit and plant them slightly high so that that water drains away during winter and then cover the soil surface with a good layer of grit which will keep the winter wet off the base of the foliage. You can see there already no flowers, but we've already got a scheme which will be green and white throughout the year.